Welcome to the MOOC online course on Youth and Local Governance. Myself, Dr. Anbu Arumugam, Senior Assistant Professor and Head, uh, Department of Public Administration at the Government Arts College for Men, Nandanam, Chennai. Very pleased to meet you all in today's class. We will be discussing about the various dimensions and perspectives about the participation of India's youngsters, the youth, the future of India in local governance. As you can see, we are going through a big phase of what is generally referred to as demographic dividend. India is actually going through what we call as a honeymoon period with regard to the population of India, where the average age will be around 28 years uh, for the next 2036 or till 2040. When we can compare it with most nations, in the western countries or even in developed nations in Southeast Asia, we can see that they have all reached a saturation point. Now, why is this important for us when we are studying about local governance? India's youngsters need to increase their participation in the political level as well as in the civic participation level. As you can see, lot of studies by very respected and reputed institutes in India have highlighted the low level of participation among India's youngsters, be it in the parliament, be it in the state legislative assemblies or in the local governance institutions. So, this has to be addressed in a very uh, productive manner. A lot of initiatives are being taken by various national and subnational governments to highlight and to improve India's youngsters participating in the local governance institutions. Now, why do we need youngsters to participate in local governance? This is the first thing which we need to have good clarity about. The studies which have been brought out by lot of institutes across India have highlighted the importance and the urgent necessity of youngsters also coming back to participate in India's local government institutions. In order to strengthen the grassroots level institutions, the participation of youngsters is considered paramount today. The voting age is 18 years and any youngster who is 18 years and above is eligible to participate in the democratic exercise. In India, elections are called as festival of democracy. Why we call it as festival? Because it involves most youngsters who reach the age of 18. When you are eligible to send representative to the parliament or to the legislative assembly in a state or even to the local corporation or municipality, it is high time they should not be bystanders in a democracy but active participants in the democracy in what we follow in India which is called as a representative form of democracy. What we need now is very much active participation by youngsters from across various spectrums who should join their local level village administration to contribute actively for the development of the village and the state and the national economy. Now, how is this related to demographic dividend? This is the point that we need to understand. When we say dividend, how can India's demography Recently, we have actually overtaken China to become the most populous country in the world. Now, let me give you a few statistics to understand uh, beyond these theoretical terms. The whole world has population around 7 billion or 700 to 750 crores approximately. I may be off the mark here and there. Please do excuse me. The population of China is around 145 crores, 1.45 billion and the population of India, we have just overtaken China. It means that we have a population of more than 145 crores or 1.5 billion odd here and there. A simple mathematics will tell you that nearly 45 to 50 percent of the entire population of human beings on this planet are living in two countries. One is India and one is China. So, the land mass we have is only around 2 percent of the land mass we have in India. India though is called as a subcontinent, we only have 2 percent of the geographical mass, but we hold among this land mass 
seventeen percent of the entire world's population. With this, the population can be considered as pressure on one hand. On the other hand, the same population, the study of which is called as demography, can also be considered as an asset. India is now going through that period. Now, this asset should be contributing to economy by also being in the organized sector. On the other hand, they also should contribute to the democratic growth of this country by contributing themselves by actively participating in all three levels of civic participation and political participation. This is why in this course, you are studying this very, very important topic which is called as youth and local governance. If you see, the term that we use is mainstreaming. Now, what do you mean by mainstreaming youth in local governance? The participation, the real participation, the active participation of youngsters from developing a village development plan. For example, they should participate in Grama Sabha meetings which are held in their local communities, in their local townships, in the local cities, in the area sabhas. In India's local governance, we refer to area sabhas in cities, metros which have big corporations or municipalities. In villages, famously we call them as gram sabhas or village panchayats. So, every year we know that on Independence Day or Republic Day, we have you know these meetings which are organized compulsorily, mandatorily by all these respective area sabhas or grama sabhas. But what needs to be highlighted here is, are the youngsters who are living in that particular locality, who are residents in that particular village, are they active participants? Are they being mainstreamed? This is what the word mainstreaming means. The active participation of the youngsters who belong to a particular community in a particular state or in a village or in a township should be understanding what is happening in their own area. That is called as mainstreaming. They should know the budget of their village. They should know what are the activities that are being planned for that particular year. They should know what are the grievances. They should be actively planning for futuristic activities, how to augment resources. These are some of the activities which any youngster can participate, definitely must participate in their own local area in order to understand what is known as grassroots level governance. This may be a technical term. This term may be very new to all of you who are watching this class, but grassroots means nothing else but what I just explained to you right now. So, that is very, very important in today's demographic dividend which we are discussing and connecting it with local governance. Now, what can a youngster contribute by being part of a local government? As you can see, the development of village panchayats is not only the responsibility of village elders, it is the responsibility of every one of us. We are the stakeholders of the community which we are part of. The government has brought out a lot of initiatives, but are we to depend only on the government at the state or at the centre? They can only supplement and complement our efforts. The efforts of the residents, of the real stakeholders of the villages, of the municipalities and townships, their active participation in the Grama Sabhas or the area Sabhas is the missing link which we are discussing today and highlighting as part of the syllabus as you are learning this course. Participation creates awareness among the population. In our subject, we call this informed citizenry. It is not only enough to be a citizen, it is not only enough to be an active participant, but you should be an informed participant in the democratic activities of your area. So, whether we like it or not, we are all part of the administrative machinery. We create the administrative machinery. So, the voice of a youngster, of a group of youngsters who are part of the local community creates a massive impact in the development of the local community. That is why the importance of youngsters coming back to their communities, also engaging in community activities, outreach activities is very, very important. The activities does not mean only the electoral process. It also means the grassroots development of that area along with the elected representatives. This can be augmented in a much better way 
by the participation. This can be enriched in a much better way by the participation of youngsters. Now, what are some of the initiatives which have been taken by government of India? Very recently, uh, we see the National Youth Festival which was inaugurated by our Honorable Prime Minister which celebrates the concept of youth participation. We celebrate National Youth Day every year in our country and we have several fellowships where the youngsters can in turn can work with representatives and understand how the democratic process can be linked at the grassroots level with the village panchayats and the local governments. So, these are some of the initiatives which have been taken by the government of India to engage the youngsters to actively participate, to be active attendance of these kind of local communities. This may vary in India. India is a very diverse country, please remember. We have to have region specific initiatives, state specific initiatives. We have a huge tribal population in India. So, we cater to various stakeholders, but the idea of local governance and the idea of integrating youth with the local government pretty much remains the same. Recently, a very important policy decision, the National Youth Policy of 2014 has been revamped and a new draft national youth policy has been drafted by the government of India and it has been presented to gather the opinions of various stakeholders. We hopefully will see the policy being uh, highlighted soon officially by the government of India as youngsters. I think we all should be looking forward to the direction, to the vision and the idea given by the government of India for the youngsters specifically in the area of local governance. Now, some of the elements of the national youth policy, the draft bill which is being circulated now, uh, they want to have a transformational agenda. You all are aware about sustainable development goals, I am sure. Now, the sustainable development goals have been given for a period of 15 years from 2016 to 2030. It is called a transformational agenda. The word transformation literally is very much applicable to the lesson that we are discussing today. So, the transformation occurs by the active participation of youngsters. The real transformation should occur at the grassroots level in order to strengthen India's economy, in order to strengthen India's socio-economic impact. We need development which is holistic. We cannot have development which is centered in one particular pocket or a few pockets of the country. We have more than 700 districts in India. Many of you are aware how many states we have and how many union territories we have. But if you break down, we have so many districts in India which are very much different. 2018, the government of India introduced a program called as Aspirational Districts Program. They targeted nearly 112 districts which were lacking when compared to non-aspirational district programs. So, they wanted to improve India's human development score. They wanted to improve India's multidimensional development. So, a lot of initiatives have been taken and all these initiatives also map a convergence. A convergence of state level policies on one hand, a convergence of national level policies on the other hand and we are all marching towards that transformational agenda by the year 2030. It is like a target a target which we feel will help us align our goals so that we can travel in a unique unison way to achieve developmental goals. So, local governance is a very, very key part of that development goals and the participation of youth across all sectors cannot be emphasized more. The youngsters need to come in, need to actively participate, contribute and enrich the governance at all levels more specifically at the local government level. The four E's approach has been given as part of the ongoing national youth festival which is being organized every year by the government of India. The four dimensions of the participation of youth in India's development specifically the local governance has been time and again emphasized and necessitated by our very own Prime Minister who is the head of our government. What are those four E's? Let us see the four E's now. Engage, 
enable, ensure and empower. By these words, we understand what are the four types of dimensions of participation of youth in local government. The first E stands for engage. The engagement of youngsters in India's governance at all levels cannot be emphasized more. So, definitely actively participating in village level activities, in village panchayats, in village communities is called as engagement. The second E stands for enable. Enabling the development is one of the primary duties of young adults who are part of this national citizenry. So, the youngsters need to actively participate and that participation enables the village development of the village level economy. The third E stands for ensure. By ensuring their active participation which can be political or which can be non-political, which can be community level, which can be outreach based, they ensure that the village level development has been prioritized. The fourth E stands for empower. Empowerment happens two ways. It is a two way road. It happens for those who are active stakeholders in the development process. It also happens to the actual process in hand which is the focus of the class today that is local governance. You can see the empowerment of the communities, of the local level village panchayats, of the gram panchayats. So, this is what we call as the 4E approach. Now, participation can be divided into two types. Generally, we use the word participation very, very frequently, very synonymously also. But what is participation? How can I participate in the local government activities of my village? There are two ways. One is political and one is non-political. When we say political, I think we are very much aware of the two avenues. One is uh, the parliament, the Lok Sabha or the Rajya Sabha where you can participate in the electoral process and try your hand in becoming a representative of your area. The second avenue is by going for the state level legislative assemblies. Again, it is the sub-national government electoral process. Now, what is the non-political method of participation for a youngster who wants to contribute to the local development? You can participate as an active member using the 4E approach in the Grama Sabhas. Secondly, you can be part of various committees of the village development plan which is framed by the district administration. Thirdly, you can be an active member of the panchayat meetings. First of all, you should participate in the meetings, actively contribute your thoughts and ideas, discuss brainstorming and then go for implementation and seek budgets. Fourthly, you can be an active contributor of the village development plan. So, these are the various levels of participation for youth, various avenues for youth in order to contribute to the local governance structure. Now, we are going to see a few statistics which are very relevant for us to understand the importance of youngsters pushing themselves and also contributing themselves towards a better India. A better village community will develop a better state a better state community will develop a better India. So, when we say simply better India, it has to come down from the grassroots level. Why are youngsters so important? Why do we need youngsters to participate so urgently in the national development process and more specifically in local governance? As we can see, the Youth in India report which is released every year by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation of the Government of India highlights and gives the priority of this particular data. As of 2021, youngsters form nearly 27 percent of India's population. That is those who are above 14 years of age and those who are below 60 years of age. And by 2031, in the next 10 years, this number is going to reduce very gradually and come to 24 percent. And as we can see in the next 5 years, again an equal reduction but only in 5 years it is going to come down to 22.7 percent. This particular data which I have given for you today for discussion is important because 
the need for youngsters to actively participate in the demographic developmental process socio economic developmental process is very very important because the next 10 years is going to be a transformational era a decade of transformation for india to provide some important points to come about to summarize and give you a short synopsis of our discussion today on the topic youth and local governance we have today discussed how to enhance the participation of youth we have also discussed the space that is necessary and the responsibility that is necessary in village panchayats for the young population of this country spaces have to be created accountability needs to be established and responsibility is a shared prospect the third important concept which we try to understand today to summarize is what is mainstreaming of youth in local governance we discussed the idea of mainstreaming we also discussed how the 4e approach enables mainstreaming of youth in local governance the fourth point which highlights the summary of today's discussion for all of you is the need for youngsters we discussed very briefly the importance the need for youngsters and their participation in local governance and to summarize the most important thing the reasons for participation in local governance and how it enriches the local governance is what we discussed today so i wish to thank you all for participating in the class today i hope you were able to understand the concept of mainstreaming the concept of youth in local governance from various dimensions political and non political and from a development perspective based on today's class we are going to be testing how far you have actively participated in the lecture on local uh, governance and participation of youth the first question for today is what is demographic dividend the answer for this question is demographic dividend refers to a period of a few years it could be 10 years or 20 years or more than 30 years in which a country goes through a phase where the entire population of the country is above 14 years uh, and below 60 years meaning the actual working age population where people are eligible to go for work or employment is greater than the non working age population in the country it could be the real youngsters children uh, we have to be deleted and the senior citizens have to be deleted from the count now if this particular population is higher for a longer period of time this is considered as a demographic dividend for that country because it will contribute to a huge economic growth of that country the next question that we would like to pose to you today based on the lecture youth and local governance is can you name the index which is developed for measuring youth development and youth participation in india the answer for this question is india's youth development index which was pioneered by the rajiv gandhi national institute of youth development in the year 2017 this particular index provides a lot of parameters for measuring india's development of youth specifically for the benefit of designing public policy the next question based on today's lecture is can you name the 4e approach the 4e approach involves engage enable ensure and empower this is what we shortly call as the 4e approach of defining india's youth development and participation in local governance The next question for today based on the lecture youth and local governance is can you tell the percentage of youth in India currently according to the statistics which has been brought out by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation of Government of India This is a tough question and the answer to the question is 27.1% 
according to the youth of india report 2022 which was published every year by the ministry of statistics and program implementation under the government of india this report brings out various dimensions statistics reports and data specifically related to the youth of this country so this data is a very very important data when we are trying to understand the participation of youth in our country thank you very much